So he's, ooh, it's a bit loud. So he's thinking, what should I talk about today? Should I do like an improv role, improvise a sort of speech like Huffman did about my life and how I've gone through? But then I thought, you know what, my book's finished. I've written a book called Body Was Gay, it's a self-help book called On the Law of Attraction Principles. It's uh, taken a year, a year in the writing, a uh, lifetime in the making, and a pain in the editing. So here it is, Bollywood Gay, uh, a help yourself book to living an authentic life. I'm gonna read the religion chapter and I'm also gonna really read about why we incarnate as LGBTI from a spiritual perspective. So your birth is a revolution, you chose to be born like this. So um, the book's intention, I'm gonna just read, I've got a few quotes that I'm gonna read first because I think they're damn good. So the first quote is, my aim to raise a conscious army of gay men or women uh, fueled by love, a weapon of choice meditation, who first, firstly rectify their own issues, thereby escaping the perils of third dimension consciousness, which locks them into physical desires, ego and suffering, elevating them to eventually bring ripple effect changes to the world. That was just a quote. Um, the book's going to be out next month on Amazon, so you can uh, have a look at it. My birth was a political statement, a statement I knew nothing of. I was told I was wrong, I was a sin. A mere existence, unnatural. My mere existence, unnatural. My love for a man, disgusting. My kisses, a revolution. Centre stage, my relationship. Standing out, my walk forced onto a platform, outsider, and then I took on that stage, put on my best clothes, and shone, just like all of you did. So, like I said, I'm gonna firstly speak about why, from a spiritual perspective, we incarnate as LGBTI. So I'm gonna skip a lot of other things, because I don't wanna bore you. So, um, is being LGBT a choice? There is deliberate intention from the non-physical uh, perception for being gay. This is by Abraham Hicks. Now I'll explain why. Yes, being gay is a choice, as is gender, but it's a choice made prior to being born on this planet. You choose it before you incarnate in your physical body in order to see a different perspective and grow as a being. You cannot consciously change your gender or sexuality once you're born. It is set to the way you intended before incarnating. And only through full acceptance of who you are may this move up and down the sexuality spectrum. Gender is unimportant from an energy perspective. It's only in the physical form where it expresses itself as one polarity or the other. Beyond the physical dimension, the soul is genderless. Your spirit is neither male or female, but male and female energy combined. We call this Shiv Shakti in uh, Indian uh, sort of uh, thinking, and thus it can manifest as either. That is why some of us uh, choose to incarnate as LGBTI in order to learn lessons needed for our soul's growth to grow and to embody femininity and masculinity within ourselves. For our souls to understand gender properly, we need to be outside social norms to feel excluded or different enough so we can grow. As LGBTI people, we have chosen to incarnate on this earth to challenge gender stereotypes and norms. Whatever you resist, persists. Currently, we are resisting anyone who challenges gender norms and thus gender and issues with it will continue. The way things stand, we are en route spiritually to be gender androgynous. We contain both divine feminine and masculine energy and thus are heading towards unity, not duality. Humanity is heading to be a race without gender. But if we resist, then we will be matched to gender and gender issues. We need to release the resistance to gender and embrace it. We can do this by acknowledging both the male and female aspects within us. Our higher self is void of gender, for energy is androgynous. Thus, androgynous people are closer to the truth of their higher self. Society says, Society says, I cannot love you because you are not the way I need you, so I can love you. Whereas the response would be, I'm not a condition that you can force into conformity in order to serve your purpose of living unconditionally, uh, of loving conditionally. You have come forth into the physical realm to say, I am that which I am and I won't change to please you. And if you don't like it, it's not my problem, it's yours. See, happiness is an internal, independent task. 
It's up to you to help someone to be happy. It's not up to you to help someone to be happy or to love you as, as a result. They themselves must realize that it's only their own connection to source energy that will make them feel loved. When we are in a state of oneness, we don't expect or ask others to conform to what we deem acceptable, and we love unconditionally. Personal alignment to Source is what most of the world lacks, as it blames others for their unhappiness. From Source perspective, you have chosen to be different enough from the norm so that society is not able to, uh, to change you, to please them. You say, I will be different enough to give them an opportunity to open up their thinking about life. If they care enough about loving me, they may be guided back to their Source and their joy. If anyone tells you otherwise, it comes from their disconnection to, from Source, and that's why you experience the pain in the words when they say, your life is a sin. You come for variety, expansion and diversity. Our consciousness wants a different kind of experience so that it can learn how to come back to alignment with our true self. In a society that is based on conformity, it's our variety that is the balance and strength for expansion. We incarnate declaring to be different enough so the laws so that laws won't be able to contain us. Not to teach a lesson to the world, but to tell others they are barking up the wrong tree when their happiness depends on our conformity. You come forth as an angel to want others to understand that they will never find joy by trying to change you. They cannot control you. Indeed, they are not, there are not enough resources to control you. Those who do not conform to binary concepts of gender are powerful teachers. We are powerful teachers of unconditional love, compassion and authenticity. We come wanting to be different than most, a difference, a difference that cannot be socialized. So many people have been square pegs rammed into brown holes, so now energies come with a greater difference. You are born with something that can't please society. It's up to them to please themselves. And um, spiritually, they say, just a side note, that there's going to be more transgender, there's going to be more LGBT people, LGBTI people incarnating on the planet because we are here, again, to reinforce the message that we will not be square pegs uh, uh, shoved into round uh, holes. All right. So find alignment with who you are. Your purpose is stronger and you're not influenced by what other th others think. You come with a deliberate intention. Your consciousness wants a different kind of contrast to expand. Diversity is a platform for where um, from where all evolution comes forth to acknowledge uh, ideas and exist and expand them further. This is happening in large numbers now where people are born into bodies or situations where they have driving impulses very different from everyone else. So yes, being gay uh, and lesbian does come with a lot of challenges. This allows your, our consciousness to expand. Expansion helps the whole universe understand a different perspective and grow. In a way, we are helping the whole living, breathing organism of the universe to learn and, and develop. From a reincarnation perspective, we all choose the lessons we want to live on Earth in order to help the all that from where all we come from to expand. We are interconnected as one being. We are droplets of water in the huge expansion of the ocean of the universe of life. We are not separate from one another. It's a holographic illusion which makes us think as such. Energetically, anatomically, you and I are not separate. Thus, whatever I experience, learn, expand upon, ultimately helps you. Being LGBTI also comes with spiritual advantages. We get the opportunity to question gender stereotypes, go outside the gender box altogether, and ultimately get to know the soul. We learn to transcend the physical, to fall in love with the soul. Love should not be restricted. If both parties practice sex whilst in alignment, love backs that union. Growth also comes from experiencing the pain of being told that what we're doing is wrong, as it creates extreme expansion for us. We have to face ourselves and be honest about what we are, which allows us spiritually to align with our true self. I'm going to talk a little bit about transgender, but I'm not going to go for the full shabam that I've written. So why do, people, uh, why do some people come as transgender? Again, it is a pre-birth intention to search for identity. A transgender person's main intention for this life is authenticity. To find authenticity, you have to be inauthentic. You have to live a life where you are lying to yourself and experience an identity crisis by feeling void of identity in order or in the wrong identity. 
Gender identity is second to choosing to be human. Transgenders spiritually choose to experience contrast through their self-image, self-reflection, and self-expression. They are here to learn that they can only be truly happy if they accept who they are. With transgender individuals, they come into the physical form with the gender they initially chose, but do not feel they fit into it. They incarnate as male, but don't identify with that gender and vice versa. This causes resistance. The first step of the healing process is to release resistance to the gender you were born in. Resistance to your gender keeps you stuck in that gender, whereas focusing positively towards that gender enables you to release it. Then you can choose a body and lifestyle that reflects the real you. This is not the same thing as trying to force yourself to be the thing that you want to change. Forcing yourself can be detrimental to your health. So um, no one comes no one comes to this to conform on this planet. We are unique in ourselves. So go live happily on your own terms and let people deal with it or not, as it's none of their business. Simply love yourself unconditionally. Trying to figure out why people are the way they are takes you out of alignment with who you really are. To in a desire to understand why anyone else is living the way they are, you are not thinking up with who you are and why you are here. Your job is you and your connection to source. You can never fully understand someone for you are not in their shoes and nothing is permanent. Everything is always in flux and changing. So that was the chapter which was about um, why we incarnate as LGBTI. Um, the reason why I read that one was because, um, it's, firstly it's the title of my topic, but um, a lot of people want to know why they spiritually are who they are. I've questioned the same, like my partner said earlier. He sometimes, even still now, questions to be straight and it would be easier for his family. And in a lot of religious texts it says that uh, it's a sin or they don't talk about it. And for myself, I wanted to get deep into the reasons why I believe in reincarnation. So I wanted to really understand the concept of why uh, souls decide to do this. And it's for expansion and growth. Um, and now I'm going to talk a little bit about religion. Um, I'll probably summarise it as well, but it will because from from an Indian perspective, like my mom would say, for example, that oh, you know, you're gay because it's bad karma you did in a past life, and I don't agree with that because I don't believe. Um, and from a spiritual perspective, karma is a clean. Um, it's the slate is clean. Um, cleaned when you when you die and then you come back you choose what lessons you want to take and I prefer that as opposed to being a victim of whatever you've done in a past life. Karma is instant and meaning that if you're angry today you're more likely to get someone giving you back your comeuppance there and then. So moving on to the religion chapter which might uh, hopefully isn't ruffle any feathers. Okay. So at your essence, you are energy, neither created nor destroyed. You can call this energy the soul, spirit, or consciousness. Regardless, your essence is pure love energy. It has no religion, for it is universal, non-sectarian. You are love. Right. This chapter is called Religion of Man versus Religion of the Soul. Religions try to reduce sexuality to the physical, when in reality this is not the case. When people are attracted to each other, it is due to their vibrational energetic match. It has nothing to do with their male or female exterior. Quite simply, it's a mutual exchange of energy that brings them together as one. It's interesting to know that throughout history, uh, the stance on LGBT issues has evolved, regressed or even stagnated. I studied Egyptian archaeology for my first degree and I did a, um, an essay on this about how in the ancient times, in the Roman, Greek, Indian, Middle Eastern times, homosexuality was revealed. But the modern day story is very different. Throughout time, religion has been used as a method to control people, control their sexuality, their reproduction, their physical movements, their economy and mind. It has helped a lot of people, of course, but it has also been a great profit maker. From a spiritual perspective, religion is seen as an ideology that is stagnant and still. As humans, we are constantly evolving and expanding. Our connection to that what we call is God is unique and evolving. My partner mentioned that too earlier about having your own personal connection to God. I myself, like him, we do not prescribe to any dogma. Um, thus, spiritually, religion is seen as a map with directions on it to all those who want to follow it. It's a guide. However, a real connection to God is and always has been a personal one. Spirituality cultivates this unique connection without dogma or regulation. It quite simply states, make your own rules. We tend to absorb, which is ironic, we tend to absorb the religion that we were born into, 
and fellow customers uh, customs according to that. Thus, there is great danger in blind faith. We need to use our own intellect and logic to deduce whether this particular religion indeed reflects the person who we are. Does it serve me? Have I read the sacred text and understood it? Do I believe it? Has what's written been written inside been written by the founder themselves? Does it embody sacred rights for all? Surely God is loving is a loving being who values and includes all. Does it include women's rights, homosexual rights, animal rights? Does it need to? Is all life sacred to you? There is no right or wrong answer and only you can decide. Certain religious texts were written many hundreds or thousands of years ago after the founder died. So has interpretation gotten in the way? Has the word of mouth been distorted? Do people follow this particular religion? Do they embody it? Are they peaceful? Are they loving? Religion is complex and personal to me. I say create your own religion and your own connection to God. Know what feels right and wrong for you. When you connect to, your high, to the higher forces, love should pour from you. Judgment and ego should dissolve. Religion, however, is not evil. It gives plenty of people hope, faith and compassion. Religion is not the problem. It's people who misuse it. So I won't discount the value of it. Use your own gut, your internal GPS system to know your truth. I'm sure all of us are well aware that the Abrahamic religions, Christianity, Islam and Judaism consider homosexuality a sin. Well, at least that's what the generalized interpreted standpoint is. There are, however, others who say that this is a misinterpretation of sources and taken out of context. They say that in the story of Lot, God punishes villagers due to their criminality, rape and violence towards one another and the angels as opposed to homosexuality itself. The, vill the villagers rape male and female alike without prejudice as a form of control and suppression. Either way, I would not be, I would not let it be a defining point for myself, at least. You are free to choose your own stance. I am neither religious nor entrenched into views of sin, fear and pro pros um, proscriptions on what to do or not to do. I believe in love and freedom for all. Today some dom denominations within these religions accept homosexuality and are inclusive of homosexual people. Some even welcome uh, members regardless of same-sex sexual practices, with some allowing for the ordination of LGBT clerics or rabbis and affirming same-sex unions. They generally claim that people who are attracted to same-sex are acceptable, but not the, se the act of anal sex is not. Indian religions, however, such as Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism and Sikhism, do not specifically focus on sexuality, though there are strong historical references that homosexuality existed at the time of the compilation of various religious sects. These religions tend to be more fluid, open or unclear with regards to sexual orientation. The texts in which they are expressed are gen generally more tolerant or based on compassion, love and acceptance for all. They do not specify homosexuality as a sin, although modern day culture in reality is less accepting. For example, Hindu society and religion was previously more open to variations in human sexuality than there are at the present. Historically, Hinduism accommodated institu institutionalized or revered same-sex love and sexuality as witnessed in its mythologies and religious imagery. In some Hindu sects, in particular among the Hitra population, who are the transgender population, many divinities are androgynous. There are Hindu deities who are intersex, who manifest in all three genders, who switch from one gender to the next, male de deities with female moods and vice versa, deities born from either two males or two females, deities born from a single male or a, or a female, deities who partner with the opposite sex or avoid them altogether, and so on. So you can understand there's a lot of scope there for the fluidity, but the British colonial laws have been enforced and damaged India right now and Pakistan and Bangladesh, and we're going to try to change that. All right. However, this is not accepted by a majority of Hindus as it is often considered heretical in nature. Those who do accept it claim that it's impossible for humans to grasp the diverse qualities of both God and nature. Many Hindu priests have performed same-sex marriages, arguing that marriage is a union of souls rather than gender, and that love is a result of attachments from previous births. In 2009, the Hindu Council in the UK became the first major religious organisation to support LGBT rights when they issued a statement saying Hinduism does not condone, condemn homosexuality. There is nothing stated against homosexuality in Sikhism, which is the religion I was born in, but I consider myself uh, spiritual. The Anand Karj, the marriage ceremony, states this. The two female souls unite with the one male soul of the Lord. 
Thus, you can even say that the scriptures advocate lesbian marriage. However, as we all well aware, the soul in Sikhism, like most Indian religions, is genderless. And thus, this is only metaphorically written. Sikhism stresses the importance of living a good life and passing good values onto one's children. Having children if you are physically able is considered a good thing. Of course, gay couples can adopt or have their own kids in different ways. The Agartha, which is a Sikh governing body, however, has constructed this um, one particular code of conduct, uh, which, is a marriage, which states that marriage is between a man and a woman. Now, um, there, in the past there were many code of conducts for different parts of society, like warriors or householders, um, and also, so therefore the Gartha has described homosexuality as against the laws of nature. But we all well aware that Gartha is actually very uh, corrupt, and a lot of Sikhs are against them, so I wouldn't take notice of what they say. Um, and it, yeah, it has to be noted that it's mainly made of men as well as it always been has been. No women of different abilities, uh, disabilities, or sexualities or caste has ever been represented in the Kalpa. Thus, men of power use philosophical reasoning to deduce the meaning of the Sikh's words, Sikh Guru's words, and uh, it has been under the firing line because of its corruption. So. Um, through time, culture evolves, ways of living and thinking evolve too, leading to assume that religion would evolve alongside it. But this has not been the case for most world religions. Now I'm going to talk into the spiritual part. According to New Age spirituality, many decisions made by religious organizations were not inspired by source. They were motivated by economic reasons, biases and poor opinions. The way to know if someone is inspired by source, source being God, is to know, is to see how it feels to you. If something feels bad, you can deduce that source did not inspire it. So when religions tell you you are wrong, a sinner, or you will go to hell, that bad feeling you experience helps you to know that it was not source inspired. Source does not hate, judge, or prejudge. Source is loving and pure. What happens in most world religions is that people who have not experienced God themselves reiterate the subjective God experience of another from the text they have read out to you. This is greatly flawed premise because truth is subjective and when expressed to others is prone to distor distortion and misinterpretation. Over time, people modify religion to serve their own purposes. Copies of religious texts have been edited and retranslated many times. The integral base and power are glossed over in a hundred retranslations. Money, power and control are behind this. This is a really good quote. Anyone who is angry in their religion is not living it. As children, we meet adults who are not connected with their true value or worthiness. From this lack, they pass on their fear to us. The subject of sexuality has changed countless times with the passing of new laws trying to control people and make them conform. They differ from cultures to society and religion. Sexual laws and rules have been made by those who were out of alignment with who they really are. We are all vibrational beings, and the law of attraction only brings us that which is vibrationally a match to. We should not care what others do, but should focus on our own connection to source, which I mentioned earlier in the chapter that I read out. Then you wouldn't fear the negative impact of other people's behavior. But due to ignorance fear of what others might think, we create laws that bring exactly what we don't want towards us. It is from this it is of course the case that these topics, we, the topics that we push against are more likely to occur with ferments. The topic of sexuality is the same. I'm going to think, I'm really going to skip a little bit and uh, go more towards the end. Right. Should you go against religion? By shouting no at religion will cause resistance within you um, and from your own connection to God. Thus, don't make a life-changing uh, issue. Thus, don't make it a life-changing issue and let it go. By giving up resistance to religion, you will feel better. You have come alignment. You have to come into alignment with who you are. They haven't changed their stance, nor have you. But for the most part, religions are looking at conditions and needing to control those conditions to feel good. However, you cannot control conditions and it's not your job to do so, as it will make you miserable. Identify your own personal relationship with Source, which all religions talk about. Recognize that, um, recognize the thoughts which have alignment with you and make you feel better. You have a right to choose for yourself what is for value. Look for guidance within you and know what feels right. So this is what I've been keep harping on over and over again. It's about look at your own connection and what feels good for you. If it feels bad for you, then you know the person who's written it and was not connected to God. Um, and then I'm going to say, 
create your own private personal religion, a religion between you and your creator, a religion where you make the rules that can change according to your own inner guidance system. Follow your gut instinct and listen to how you feel. What does source mean for you? Does it mean love? How would you be treated by soul creation? What new beliefs would you like to add and what would you like to rapidly remove? The religion of the soul is one of peace, love and acceptance of all. I'm not saying gain a following, I'm merely saying gain a personal understanding with yourself and that which is God. And that's it, that's my talk. But um, yes, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you uh, gained something from that interesting. But if you have any questions, you can ask me, otherwise I'll pass it on to the next speaker.